Hey, we just got the new Lincoln Square Wave 205 into the shop. We're gonna go over its functions and uh, put it to the test. Here's the machine. Um, Size-wise, pretty similar to if you're used to Miller's. Looks like a uh, Mac Star size, roughly. Uh, the pin connector for the uh, foot pedal or for your DK or whatever you're using is a six pin connector. For TIG, the orifice for the gas flow is through the dense connector. You can see it's got that O-ring in there. Getting your gas into the machine to its solenoid is on the back end. And then one, one nice thing with this, it's already hardwired for uh, 220. And then you have an adapter if you're gonna use it on 110, but at least it's not that twist uh, connector like on some of the machines. This tend to be a little bit fragile, it seems like to me. So this one being hardwired for 220 is nice, nice solid connection. The machine did come with a foot pedal. It does seem to be fairly robust. Again, six pin connector. Also included, uh, of course you got your instruction manual. You have a TIG torch that flexible line and a sheath protector for it. You got a little starter kit for consumables and torch components. A couple different size, or actually three different size cups. You got a seven, eight, and nine size cup. You can test that out. Came with some tungsten and gas lenses. And then also in here, you got a stinger. You got your ground, typical clamp on ground. It's got the 110 to 220 adapter. Got a argon line and it came with a gauge and flow meter. Getting the argon set up, 100% argon. Got the gauge and flow meter that came with the kit. Uh, one side's gonna be a tank pressure. The other side is gonna be uh, your CFH going to your machine or cubic feet per hour. I'm gonna set mine at 15. The instruction says, in the manual, says 15 to 20. Um, if you wasn't do a procedure, then of course follow that. But right now I'm gonna go to 15. Your argon feed into the machine is on the aft end of the box here. I'll probably switch it to some quick disconnects at some point, but for right now, just to get going with the machine, put that in. Um, got an extended line. Uh, different than the one that the machine came with just because of distance where I'm putting the machine but um, Yeah, any of the argon lines that you buy um, Will come with a you know, special tip on the threaded end here We're gonna go over setting up your torch with this link and square wave 205 the Kit comes with three different Sizes on a few different things. Um, this is back cap. You got a extended length one. You see, say a medium, and then a short one. It's gonna depend on your tungsten length. The one we're gonna go with right now is a three thirty seconds tungsten. Kit comes with a blue coated one, should be 2% lanthanated. I already put a tip on it, they don't come sharpened. You got your collet, it's got the size on it. 
Make sure you pick the right matching one with your tungsten. The cups, you've got a six, seven, and eight. And if you're not sure what that means, basically you got six sixteenths opening for your seven. You got seven sixteenths. And then of course eight, you got eight sixteenths. Comes with your three different gas lenses. And then there's this white piece that's gonna help you seal between the cup and the torch uh, to make sure your gas is flowing properly and not getting impurities from the surrounding air. I'm starting out here, the cap is already on, it just threads on, there's an O-ring to help seal with the gas. You can going to call it, run my tungsten in, and it come from the front. Put that in here. You'll see it's got some cuts in it. So when you tighten this gas lens down, it's going to bite down on the tungsten to lock it in place for whatever your stick out is that you're going to be running with. This white sleeve here, the tapered end is going to go pointed aft. Don't tighten this lens down all the way yet. You gotta find your stick out. I'm gonna go with the seven cup right now. Eyeballing it, I'm gonna go about a three eighths stick out. Now I can tighten it. Put your cup on. Torch is set up. Your workpiece ground, if you're running TIG, is going to go up top on this machine. And then your TIG torch will be down on the bottom. And there's a diagram showing if you're switching between stick and TIG where that would go. Basically, you're going to go opposite. If you're going to stick weld, you're going to move your ground down to the bottom and put your stinger up on top. Got the six pin connector. There's a notch up on, oh, six o'clock position. These are typically long winded, just so you know. Power's on the back side of the machine. All right, we're gonna select our process for DC TIG. I'm gonna press the knob. You set your amps. Runs up to 205, like the machine model. I'll probably put it, I'll go 160 for what I'm gonna mess with. And that's your max. You can adjust it as you're welding if, with your foot uh, controller, your remote. If you have a DK, whatever you're using for your remote, you can control it, but that's just setting your max. Pulse is off right now. I'm gonna go to my post flow. And you could go a second for every 10 amps that you're running. I'll probably just put mine at 10 seconds. 
Some base materials are gonna be a little bit more sensitive. Stainless, for example, you might want to run it a little bit longer than uh, carbon steel. All right. So we're set up to run the straight DC TIG. All right, you might be able to notice this machine has high freak start. Uh, different than that lift arc you might be used to if you haven't had a machine with high freak. Oh, you just notice you don't have to touch the tungsten to the base material. Uh, you just leave a little gap and as you press on your foot pedal or your amp controller, it'll initiate your arc. 